Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Relaxation for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks or Relaxation Hypnosis for stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. Now, this is episode thirty five. And there has been quite a time between the 34th and this, the 35th episode. So I originally made this podcast or made this hypnosis course a 34 day course back in 2017 and I uploaded it as a podcast in November 2018 about six months ago or seven months ago and it's become more and more popular getting more and more daily downloads so I had a similar thing with my Sleep Hypnosis Weekly Podcast, which was originally a seven-week course, which was around the same time as this one. And that became popular, the podcast, uh, since November so I decided to make some new episodes, some new recordings weekly on that one just to see whether or not that's what people wanted and it was and it's grown even more over the last six or seven weeks and I've been watching this podcast grow and thinking shall I make some more sessions for this and uh, I'm sorry if this is a a little bit of a boring introduction but I'm good at being boring It's, it's a relaxation session it's not supposed to be exciting and though the part of your mind responsible for feeling karma the part of your mind responsible for being able to deal with situations that previously were stressful and problematic and turning that feeling and changing 
that response within you in a way that can transform how you feel so I guess there is a bit of an excitation if that's a word an excitability a stimulation of those parts of your mind an activation I'm trying to think of some other words that have Asian at the end of it so what I've decided is to start making some new recordings for this podcast and I've changed the title I've taken the word daily out of the title so so that I can you know maybe I'll do them daily maybe they'll be every few days it just takes the pressure off because in order for me to make these recordings I also need to feel relaxed otherwise it doesn't work imagine having a massage from someone that was really uptight and angry I can't imagine coming away from that massage feeling particularly calm I actually did have a massage years ago I've had lots of massages over the years I actually did a massage course at college Um, but I went to this massage uh, place it was a health spa and the person was talking all the way through all about their problems all about the things that were on their mind and you know other than a towel I was practically naked so I couldn't run off so in the same way When I make these recordings, when I'm talking to you, I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling relaxed. You can hear the background sounds. lots of birds in the garden and actually just then it sounded like a lot of seagulls with my eyes closed which they are I almost felt like I was by the beach which I'm not that's a good thing about closing your eyes And allow your imagination 
to just play. And before we talk about imagination, I need to just mention, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Even if you're sitting in a chair or lying down with your eyes open. You know, I'm not necessarily uh, not commanding you to close your eyes. Not that I can command you to do anything. That's up to you. But, you know, don't listen to any of my recordings or any relaxation, hypnosis, audios by anybody unless you can safely close your eyes for your safety and others as well. If you're flying a plane, then stop this recording. That's kind of where we're at with that one. So I feel like I've got a lot of kind of catching up to do in some ways, you know, regarding the 34 episodes that I've already recorded two and a half years ago. However, I've still been making more recordings. I've still made hundreds of recordings since that time just on other podcasts so I haven't uh, I've not been inactive in fact the last year I've made more recordings than at any other time since 2006 when I started making online hypnosis recordings for free I generally do at least one, sometimes two, sometimes three recordings a day, but usually at least one. So I average probably about 10, 11, 12 recordings a week. Sometimes more. And the way I see these recordings going is to build upon what's been already said by me in previous recordings. But I'm also aware that some people will be listening now to me for the first time so each episode needs to stand alone by itself as well as connecting to previous and future Sessions. So this is kind of a, a reintroduction, as it were, to what we're doing here, what this podcast is about, and what it will be about moving forward. And one thing, not the only thing, but a very important thing that I learnt when it came to panic attacks 
and I'm sure I mentioned some of my own experiences in the past episodes but in 2002 when I first really started having regular panic attacks I it changed my life absolutely changed my life and I did not know what to do about it and there was no there didn't seem to be any help out there for me But there probably was. You know, I bought books, but I did go to some therapy. But there was probably more stuff out there than I realised. I just didn't know where it was. I didn't know where to look because I didn't understand what was going on. I literally felt like my brain was dysfunctioning, like there was actually something seriously wrong with my brain. And as for the word panic, panic attack, the first one I had, the first major one, I was just in the office working. I was on a telephone. I wasn't in a panic. I wasn't particularly concerned about anything I was just doing my job the level of stress was pretty high and I was drinking a lot of coffee and I was working long hours and it was sales, I was in a sales job and it was the week where I broke the sales record and I'd spent all week focusing on breaking that record and you know winning the prize so it's kind of a very memorable week of my life but even though it was so obvious like now looking back at it it's so obvious that I had pushed myself too hard and that I was just pumping caffeine and sugar into my system and I was probably getting very wound up with the customers at times frustration that comes with doing call centre work could be quite a frustrating job sometimes as it is for the customers as well I'm sure but I still couldn't figure out you know the word panic it didn't fit I didn't have anyone chasing me. I wasn't running down the road with a a lion chasing me. I 
So I couldn't get my head around that. But anxiety, yes. A stress attack, a stress response, an over response. It was as if my adrenaline had just been kick started, but on overload. had all this energy but not nice energy and I know that it's different for everybody I know that we all experience things in a different way whether it's physical or emotional mental spiritual even we f experience things differently even when it comes to taste some people like peanut butter some people can't stand it some people like a certain comedy film another person might sit through it and think what a pile of poo And it can be weird to try and get your head around it sometimes. Why don't they like it? I like it. Why don't they like it? And that's why it can be so difficult, not just for other people, to understand what we're going through, what people with anxiety are going through but it's also equally it can be as difficult for us to understand to comprehend what we are going through and why because it doesn't make sense sometimes Because unlike phobias, which can seem even, you know, phobias right, is just really, really extreme anxiety towards a specific thing. And some phobias seem really logical. Or at least understandable. So if someone's got a phobia of a crocodile, well, first of all, it's not something that most of us would see on a daily basis, not something that we would need to avoid or to prepare ourselves for. And also, if you did see a crocodile, you'd need to ideally keep as far away from it as possible. So a lot of people could relate to that. Think, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But then, if someone has got a phobia of butterflies, a lot of people would just laugh at that. 
like literally out loud laugh in the person's face saying that's just ridiculous how could you be scared of a, a little beautiful butterfly when the reality is that that person may have the exact same response to a butterfly as they would a crocodile someone that's scared of a crocodile and although it may not make sense it doesn't have to make sense you don't have to know the cause of an illness in order to take the medication you just need to know what the illness is knowing the cause can help to prevent it in the future but in the now it's about the cure it's about the getting better and you may think well why am I mentioning phobias and crocodiles and what have I got against butterflies well I've got nothing against butterflies or crocodiles mind you ever tried to catch a crocodile and your butterflies are quite difficult as well the flying not that I would catch a butterfly but you know when I was younger when I was a little kid I used to have a little butterfly net to catch it and just hold it in my hand and just let it fly away there wasn't much on telly that day And another thing is being able to just laugh at yourself. Not in a cruel way, but just in a humorous way. In a light-hearted way. in a sense that this doesn't have to be quite as serious as you allowed it to be in the past and that kind of loosens things it loosens your mind because we all have those little set things those set ideas in our minds that they're almost it's like it's a wall that idea is a brick in a wall and it's been concreted in with cement but that idea it's not needed it's you know the rest of the wall is kind of okay doesn't need that brick that brick does not represent the rest of the wall that's just an idea an idea which maybe is holding you back an idea that's getting in the way of your happiness an idea that may be blocking your recovery an idea that maybe it just needs to relax a little bit and when it relaxes the cement around it relaxes and it becomes looser 
to a point where that brick can be removed from the wall. The wall's still stable. It's a big wall. You've got lots of ideas and thoughts and beliefs in that wall. Lots of really good stuff. Some stuff that's not so great. Some stuff that's perhaps really bad and really unhelpful. Which needs also to be loosened up and removed. You may have millions of bricks in that wall. Memories, ideas, thoughts, beliefs. So you've got infinite amount, infinite, infinite amount that you can actually remove. And the wall will still be solid and stable. It just means that when you do take a brick out, some air can come in. A bit of fresh air. Get rid of some of that staleness. Some of that stuck in the mudness that we all experience sometimes. Especially in our minds. We all have the ability to limit our flexibility of thinking and doing as well as we all have the ability to be creative and to think up new ways of behaving and responding to outside things stimuli things that people say people's actions we have all these resources in that wall but that wall is made of lots of different bricks lots of different beliefs and it's not about religion it's not about um, morals this is the beliefs I'm talking about is your belief about yourself your belief about your ability for example to cope with a new situation that arises that may involve a group of people it may involve travelling it may involve confronting you know a situation that maybe previously you had found problematic and stressful but then when you change that belief about that situation you kind of shine a different light on it you see it differently in the same way as your bedroom at night with all the lights off in the dark looks so different to the way it does in the morning when the sunlight's shining through it looks different it can even feel different just like you can have a bath or a shower and you feel different afterwards you're not a different person but you may feel different and 
you may think, well, what's this got to do with anxiety and stress and panic attacks? What is this bloke going on about? And that's a good question. Well, it's all about you. It's all about how you think. It's about how you feel. But in a different way to how maybe someone else may say it to you. Because the one thing I'm going to ask you to do today only thing I'm going to ask you to do today is this give yourself a break go easy on yourself in other words be kind to yourself You may say that's three different things, but it's not. It's all the same thing. Stop having a go at yourself. Stop telling yourself off. Stop telling yourself that uh, you're not good enough or that you know you shouldn't feel stressed or that you shouldn't feel anxious or you shouldn't have panic attacks. Start from that thought pattern of actually no longer telling yourself off. You don't need to be your own parent. You're not a small child. You don't need to be told off by anybody. Especially not when it comes to being unwell and that's another thing you need to remember extreme anxiety extreme stress panic attacks anxiety attacks this is an illness it doesn't have to be a quick fix But you know what can be quick? A little bit of love. A little bit of self-love. That can be instant. Showing yourself a bit of kindness. That's an instant thing. You can do that physically. could be as simple as watching a movie you want to watch taking a day off work if you need to doing something you enjoy or it could be as simple as doing absolutely nothing Maybe you can be your own nurse. Could you imagine if you're in a hospital bed? You just had an operation, you was unwell. What would you want? Would you want a nurse coming around moaning at you? Telling you um you know, maybe you've had an accident. Maybe, you know, telling you, oh, you shouldn't have done that. It's your fault this happened. Uh, why can't you be better? Why can't you? Why can't you heal quicker? What are you going to do in the future? What if this happens again? This has happened in the past. Haven't you learned anything? Would you want someone to say that to you? A nurse to be 
on your case the whole time? Or do you want a nurse to be gentle and kind, considerate, caring, loving, accepting? So I wouldn't say maybe be your own nurse. Perhaps you already have been. But you've been the other one. You've been the horrible nurse. You've been the, the bitter nurse. The one that's just having a go at you. And you don't need that. It's of no use to you. It's like telling someone that's walked in the road and got run over, telling them, well, you should have looked, you should have looked before you crossed. You better look in the future before you cross the road. You don't want someone following you around, telling you, you should look before you cross the road, because you know that. Believe me, the last person that needs to be told to look before they cross the road is someone that's just been run over. And even though it may be well-meaning, it's not useful. It's not gentle. Can you do that? Today, be gentle with yourself. Just be gentle. Every time you notice that you're saying something to yourself or thinking about something, that might happen that's not helpful maybe just be gentle maybe just say that's, that's enough of that we don't need that Just be gentle, just be kind to you. And accept yourself, show acceptance. This is what's happening now, doesn't mean it's gonna happen forever. Which means there's no benefit in thinking about the future with, you know, a negative tint to it, rehearsing anxiety and stress and panic. Rehearsing that is not necessary and it's definitely not kind to you. simple exercise that could be done to prove the power of our thoughts is if you got ten people just people off the streets you know that have never waited 
in a restaurant or anything like that and you put gave them all a, a tray with glasses full of wine or water or whatever liquid in them and they needed to walk like a hundred yards along a pavement a very narrow pavement if you got five of them to imagine walking down that pavement easily naturally just without any problems at all they walk down they can hold the tray it's upright and they get to the other end and they put the tray down on the table they may spill a little bit but it doesn't matter it's not about that it's just a you know it doesn't matter if they spill one in fact even if one falls over it doesn't really matter but it should be fine they've got a cloth they can clean up if it you know if, if one of the glasses you know spills a little bit of water onto the tray it's fine in fact the whole exercise is not really that important just something to do it's just an experiment just to test that the the trays are okay and they're you know maybe the new trays just tested that do they work properly do they uh, are up to the job and then the other five people you focus on how narrow the path is focus on how heavy the tray is focusing on how wobbly the tray is focusing on how full the glasses are focusing on how important it is that the glasses all end up at the other end of the pavement of the pathway without any spillages at all and just get them to imagine how bad it would be if they tripped or if they slipped or if the tray tipped over And you spent half an hour with both sides, one f side five, the other side of five. One thinking that's not really a big deal and it's fine, I'll just do it. And the other five thinking, what if I slip? The pavement's so narrow. What if I the tray just slips over what if I spill something I mean I can pretty much guess what the result of that test would be once each individual walks down that little pathway for a hundred yards because of what they're prepared in their mind and the same goes for all of us when it comes to 
preparation for what comes next. So maybe shining that light of kindness into the future. Can give you a bit of a reprieve, a rest from worrying about something that doesn't exist yet. Giving you an opportunity to enjoy that sense of generosity that you are showing towards yourself. And changes naturally occur in a kind of effortless way. It's a bit like planting a seed in a pot and you put some water in and then you don't have to do anything because that flower or that plant or that vegetable whatever it may be just grows So by planting the seed, the seed of kindness towards yourself, or just the idea, the seed can just be an idea of something changing within you. The idea of you Perceiving yourself in a different, more open, generous and loving way from now onwards. Now. going to bring this recording to an end and it's kind of like a being a reintroduction to me and what my intentions are with these recordings because I just feel it's important to do this and to help and hopefully those seeds that have been planted will become very noticeable for you in a way that may surprise you but at the same time
if you're listening to this because you've listened to me before maybe many times before you can expect to enjoy some benefits enjoy more relaxation and calmness of your mind your thoughts and your energy more relaxed more kindness spreading through your body towards your body and your mind and you can start to notice these useful changes now I'm going to go so thank you for listening I'll speak to you next time bye